Hello friends, let's learn some interesting facts in this video. Why oil tanker or water tanker is cylindrical in shape rather than a rectangular shape? Water is made up of atoms of hydrogen and oxygen. Both of these can trigger fire. Why does the flame go out when you actually pour water? In the past, pigeons were used to carry messages. How did these pigeons know where to take that message exactly? What is the science behind birth of twins? Watch this video till the end to find out the answers. Usually, if you look at an oil tanker or a water tanker, it is made in a cylindrical shape. Even though it is easy to make a rectangular box shape, why cylindrical shape is chosen? The first reason is, cylindrical shape makes it easy to remove the oil or water from the tank. As the oil in the tank reaches the bottom of the tank as shown here, when it comes to box shape, the oil will be scattered underneath and will be left in the corners which makes it difficult to clean. So it is designed in cylindrical shape. The second reason is the rectangular shape has flat sides and corners so the oil pressure inside makes them cracking and leaking from these corners. When it comes to cylindrical shape, there are no weak points and the pressure is evenly distributed over all the parts. So this structure is a little strong. This is one of the reasons why planes windows have curves in the corner rather than the box shape. So they can withstand the pressure better. While the fluid is being transported in a vehicle, oil or water in the tank ripples when brakes are applied or accelerated. Cylindrical shape helps in reducing these ripples compared to the box shape. Another important reason is stability. The lower the center of gravity, the better the stability. If it is too high, it will damage the stability of the vehicle and make that vehicle vulnerable to accidents. For all these reasons, the tanks that transport fluids are of cylindrical shape. The chemical formula of water is H2O. Each atom of water has one oxygen atom and two hydrogen atoms. Both of these hydrogen and oxygen are known to increase the flame. But how does the water puts out fire? Let's find out. There must be three elements in order for any object to burn. A flammable substance like wood or paper acting as fuel. Oxygen, it is an oxidizer which helps to keep the flame burning. Number three, an energy source like heat or spark. All these three together ignite and eventually burn to ashes. Now let us see what happens at the atomic level. Hydrogen gas is highly reactive and will be ready to ignite any time, but it must have an oxidizer called oxygen. The hydrogen and oxygen atoms in the water come together and form a bond between them. This chemical reaction releases light and energy. This is nothing but its burning. When something burns, there should be a residue like ash, right? In this reaction, water is the residue. That is, if a paper-like object burns, it will turn to ash. Similarly, water is formed when hydrogen reacts with oxygen. If you try to ignite ash, it won't burn. Similarly, pouring water to extinguish the flame will not increase the flame as it is already the residue of the reaction. In the past, when there were no technology or postal service, people used to send messages through pigeons. How could these pigeons travel so far and carry that message? People who went to war about 3000 years ago used to send messages through pigeons to let their family members know about them in case of emergency. It is estimated that over 500,000 pigeons were sent to send such messages during World War I alone. Pigeons that usually carry messages like this are called homing pigeons. Pigeons are particularly good at remembering where they live, no matter how far they go. For example, when a king went on expedition to another country or went to a war, they will use these pigeons to inform about their situation to the people in their kingdom. That is why they used to carry pigeons in cages which belongs to their own kingdom. When they want to send a message, they write the message on a piece of cloth or a paper, place it in a lightweight case and tie it to the pigeon's leg. The pigeons only fly back to the place where they have been bought from. This means that pigeons cannot be sent anywhere. They are only capable to fly back where they came from. They can't be sent to an unknown places. If you are wondering how the pigeons remember the route, they follow the natural landmarks such as rivers and hills while they are carried to other places. They also have strong magnetoreception skills. Magnetoreception is a sense which allows an organism to detect Earth's magnetic field. Their successful delivery rate is more than 90%. Sometimes they can be hunted by bird hunters or die of other causes. So the message is sent with different pigeons. How twins are born? I already made a video in our channel about how babies are born and how the baby grows in the womb. If anyone has not seen that video yet, I have given the link in the description. Check it out. Normally, a sperm cell in a male fertilizes a female egg, which then becomes an infant. This process changes slightly when twins are born. There are usually two types of twins, identical or monozygotic. 
which means twins are identical. Fraternal or dizygotic twins means twins that look different. Let us first look at identical or monozygotic twins. In females, the egg is released and then fertilize it with the sperm cell. The fertilized egg splits in half and grows into two separate embryos. Here, the single egg with the single sperm combination is split in two, so these two babies look identical after birth. Also, the genetic information is same with both of them. Both the babies will be the same gender, that is, of two boys or two girls. However, scientists still do not understand why the fertilized egg splits in two. Coming to fraternal or dizygotic twins, this means that females usually releases one egg a month, but in some cases, two eggs are released at a time. Combined with these two eggs with two different sperms from the male are fertilized separately and develop into two separate embryos. There might be no similarities in looks between the two babies born due to the two different sperm cells in the egg. They can be two male or two female or can be one male and female. Ok friends, if you like this video, please like it and share it with your friends. To watch more interesting videos like this, please subscribe to my channel, ask me why and activate the bell button next to it.